Hello everyone and welcome back to Flight Sim 2020 where during a recent live stream I decided to test out definitively finally what the maximum speed and altitude of the experimental Dark Star Scramjet added by the new DLC is. And so we'll nail those numbers. Uh, uh, hint, it's going to be hard-coded. There's no avoiding it. Basically, this is a plane that was designed to hit the limits of the sim, as far as I can tell. Uh, but I also wanted to check out its range, and you saw me have a plot from Edwards Air Force Base to Lisbon. I also made sure that I minimized the payload and set my actual weight. <laughs> and uh, But then it reset it to 170 pounds. So anyway, the pilot is still 170 pounds, I think. And so here we are taking off from Edwards. The music, incidentally, is just what I was playing during the live stream. And since that's hard baked into the uh, the sound of the sim, I can't remove it. But there's Edwards. We had to do a full turnaround in order to get back on course here. Uh, but that allowed for a nice scenic view. And we are going to be covering much ground in many time zones. Unfortunately, the landing in Lisbon is going to be in the dark. And we will land in Lisbon. So, spoilers. But this is sort of a makeup video for the previous one where I tested range and failed to actually land at Heathrow. And I realized uh, from that video that I had made certain assumptions about how this thing flew and what the fuel efficiency was that weren't quite right. And so by just going full out and maximizing the height and speed, I think that'll be the most efficient way to go. You saw me barely pitching down at all to break Mach 1 there. So the whole inverted thing that they had us do in the challenge, I think, is just nonsense. Uh, basically, it was just for fun, uh, you know, for show and everything, uh, to give the challenge a little bit more flavor. Uh, but anyway, it does have to pitch down to break the sound barrier, just it doesn't have to be dramatic or anything. And so after we pass Mach 2, I start going up again. I just basically break the sound barrier what uh, the way I would do with the Concorde or something. Uh, slight pitch down, nothing too dramatic. And here we are, uh, getting close to 120,000 feet. We're going to activate the Stramjet. Uh, somebody uh, s uh, suggested that th we should stay at 120,000 feet. It, in real life, this thing should not be able to go that high because it still needs to breathe air. Uh, so, yeah, in real life. But in the sim, <laughs> uh, you go... Uh, this, this is an important thing with, with uh, real life pilots and people think about real life. In the simulator, you need to go by the rules of the simulator, and the rules of the simulator here uh, seem to indicate that we can get pretty, pretty high and pretty, pretty fast. We actually max out at Mach 10 here, and that's just a hard code. It's just a hard limit, and it basically lim uh, cuts out the top end of your throttle range. So the top end of your throttle doesn't do anything, and uh, at least it uh, cuts down the fuel flow as well. So. That's fair, uh, but though the fuel flow is rather low considering the range that we ultimately get with this thing. So yeah, 275,000 feet you can see there. That's where the altitude maxes out. You can't get higher. You can see the vertical speed indicator indicates that we still have vertical speed, but we're not using it. We're not getting any higher. So we're going horizontal even though we're pitched up and have that vertical speed. So this is it. and. In theory, we could get higher if it allowed us to because we have more estimated airspeed. In other words, there's somehow air going across our airfoil that will allow us to maintain lift. So we are not reaching a stall. And yes, you can stall uh, high up. If, if you're not going fast enough, of course, you would go down if you're not getting lift. So, and we are not going fast enough, we're not going orbital speeds or anything close to it. Orbital speeds like Mach 25. So, yeah. Uh, it's interesting what the little VFR map said there. It said we had an uh, airspeed of 22,000 knots, which we do not. Uh, so, we are going at about 5,000 knots there. That's a modded VFR map, I have no idea how it came up with its numbers. And so anyway, uh, we lost our scramjet, where you see here, uh, fairly close to uh, Portugal, our destination. Uh, maybe, what is it, maybe 700 nautical miles out, so most of the way across the Atlantic uh, we were able to get. But then I had to transition to the regular jet engines and go down. In going down, the fly-by-wire system had a cow. You can see here that it's oscillating a whole lot. The way to solve that is to 
pull in the opposite direction. We're going down and it's just uh, hitting a limit and really having issues. So I just steadily pulled up very slowly in order to counteract that. And that eventually stabilizes it. So do not try and like actively go back and forth with the stick or anything like that, of course. And it'll eventually make some grand movements, but calm down. And as you see here, and we basically used the remaining two tanks for the jet engines to make our landing. Uh, the descent takes a lot more fuel than you might expect. So the best thing to do is descend rapidly and not gradually at all. Because even at idle, the engine guzzles fuel. So normally at idle, the fuel usage in a regular airplane would be very mild and you can just sort of... Uh, go down very smoothly, but I don't think that's the optimal thing for this plane. So yeah, some bouncing up and down, but eventually I steady it, and there we have it, and we continue to approach Lisbon, and I start descending, of course, but probably I would choose to descend even sharper than I did here, and at the right altitude we end up at Mach 0.9, we are basically idle. So as we descend here, I will have to point out that, of course, this thing is sort of OP and not realistic. <laughs> um, yeah, we crossed uh, 5,000 nautical miles, uh, almost 5,000 nautical miles. And in the end, I think it was an hour and 26 minutes. We'll get a, a definitive logbook entry for that. And so here I am turning towards the airport at Lisbon. And we'll try and follow the beacons in and everything. Uh, the front display doesn't really show the runway very well yet, so it was difficult to line up, even though visibly, if I could see the runway in front of me, it would be easy, because it's very bright and distinct, but now we can definitely see the runway on that display, and we continue in. But yeah, it's just sort of a fun plane, it's not a realistic plane, it's sort of a debugging plane, I feel like. Uh, incidentally, we tried a low altitude test, and it is has a speed limit at low altitude. You can't go beyond about Mach 3.2. So there's no point trying to use the scramjet at low altitude with it. And it guzzles fuel like crazy at low altitude if you try and go Mach 3.2 down there. So, yeah. That's a challenge. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we can uh, have little races, very quick races, like drag races with this thing, I don't know. Alright, so that's the landing at Lisbon. And I taxi off, but get met by a truck which I guess is there to help me. And start switching everything off in order to get the logbook entry, basically. And uh, I don't know what exactly needed to... There's always one thing that needs to be switched off to really get the simulator to be convinced that this thing is shut down. But anyway, there's logbook entry. One hour and 26 minutes from Edwards to LPPT. And so, it could probably go a little bit further, but if you saw the tank at the end, there wasn't that much left. So, maybe 5,000 nautical miles is the range or something thereabouts. Anyway, so with that test, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.